And we're so glad you could be with us tonight. Thank you for coming. My name is Lauren Royce. I'm the director of the Energy Smart Homes Program here at Sustainable Westchester. And we have a really packed agenda for you tonight and a great list of speakers. So we're recording the meeting tonight and um, the presentations and the links that we're gonna put in the chat, everything's gonna be emailed to folks after the meeting, probably on Monday. So if you're feeling like there's just way too much information coming at you tonight, know that the recording will be sent and all the links and everything will be available to you after the meeting. So we have our chat feature open as well. After we get started with the introductions, you can chat to the Q&A in the chat function to submit any questions that you have. We're going to be going through our presentation tonight from 7 to 8. And after that, we're going to have breakout rooms with the different contractors. So you'll be able to ask the contractors personal questions about your house or any questions from the presentation. So we'll have four breakout rooms, one with dandelion for geothermal, one with Healthy Home for insulation and air sealing. Bell will be talking about heat pumps, air source, and heat pump hot water heater. And we'll have a sustainable Westchester breakout room about grid rewards. And that's going to be at 8 o'clock. So let's get right into it. I really want to express my gratitude to Assembly Member Chris Burdick and State Senator Pete Harkham for joining Sustainable Westchester and co-hosting this presentation tonight. We have had the highest amount of registrations for a webinar ever, and we're just so pleased for you to be here with us tonight. So I'm going to pass it off to my colleague to introduce our elected official. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Lauren Kroll, and I am a community energy advisor in the Energy Smart Homes Department. I am now going to be introducing our elected officials for the evening. Uh, so we would first like to introduce Assembly Member Chris Burdick. Uh, Assembly Member Burdick has been widely recognized for his environmental leadership, having been honored by Renewable Heat Now and the New York League of Conservation Voters for his legislative work. He sits on the State Assembly's Committee on Environmental Conservation and has routinely advocated for the expansion of policies that incentivize the uptake of heat pumps and energy efficiency upgrades. Assembly Member Burdick, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much, and it really is an honor to be here. And I'm here with so many of my longtime friends, and uh, I, we all have worked in this area for quite some time. Uh, I think I've been at it for maybe 20 years or more as an elected official. And I can tell you that one of the things that so excites me is that we have now so much of a commitment at every level of government, and especially at the state and the local level in terms of doing everything that we need in order to move our region into a clean economy. And Sustainable Westchester certainly has been at the forefront of that in Westchester County. And um, once again, showing leadership that the state can see as a gold standard. And you know, in doing this, one of the most important things is to make sure that no one is left behind. And that's what we at the state level and everyone at the local level is focused on as well. We know how important it is that we reach underserved populations. That's the underpinning of the CLCPA, and it reaches all the way through this program, through NYSERDA, through the development of the regional clean energy hubs, and the work that Sustainable Westchester is gonna be doing as one of those clean energy hubs for this area. And so our region is going to be doing its very important part in meeting the statewide goals. And how do we do that? Well, you learn a good deal about that right now in terms of leveraging rebates and incentives for home energy upgrades, whether they be heat pumps or other things that can be done for your homes. And you know what you learn as well is not only do you get the savings with federal tax credits, utility rebates, and other incentives, but you're gonna have a more comfortable house and you're gonna know that you are doing a part in helping us attack the climate crisis. And so, but I think that we all need to stay focused on what is so important, which is the ways in which we can help to address the soaring energy costs and how this, is going to be able to help combat that. And I have to say that 
I was a tad surprised that my longtime friend and colleague, Pete Parkham, did not lead this off because if anybody is the leader in the state on this, it is Pete as chair of the Environmental Conservation Committee on the Senate. And I have to say, it is so good to be partnering with Pete in this area. So thank you for everything that you're doing, Sustainable Westchester. Thank you to all of those who've tuned in on this. We are so pleased that you're gonna help us be part of the solution and that you too will be able to enjoy some of the benefits from both the savings as well as helping to save our planet. So thanks so very much. Thank you so much, Assembly Member Burdick. And uh, you got a little uh, preview of what I was going to say about Senator Harkum from uh, Assembly Member Burdick's comments, but uh, I will now launch into introducing uh, New York State Senator Pete Harkum. Senator Harkum was recently named as chair of the State Senate Environmental Conservation Committee and has advocated for proper planning around the execution of New York State's Climate Act. He was endorsed by the New York League of Conservation Voters in 2022 for co-authoring legislation around wastewater management in hydrofracking practices and helping direct funds towards addressing water quality issues in Northern Westchester. Senator, the floor is yours. Lauren, th thank you so much. And, and to my, my good friend and partner, Chris Burdick, I, I yield to you always. And thank you for the kind words. Flattery will get you everywhere. Uh, but I think in this case, since you're one of the really one of the, the founders, you were on the ground floor of, of Sustainable Westchester. I, I yield to you to you always. It's, it's great to be here with all of you tonight. This is an amazing turnout. I see 172 participants. Um, really, really an exciting, exciting turnout. First, I want to thank Sustainable Westchester. For those of you who may not be familiar with this organization, they're not just a statewide leader, they're really a national leader in greening our communities. And they have been such a tremendous resource, not just to those of us in government, but also to, to homeowners, to business owners, to property owners, to help them access uh, clean energy solutions and to save money. Because ultimately what this is all about in, in, in part is saving money. We saw what happened to the global carbon energy markets this past year with the invasion of Ukraine. Um, we've seen other geopolitical events that caused prices to spike, to soar through the roof. When we use clean energy solutions, we're producing that energy right here in New York State. Um, and it's not subject to the geopolitical forces. The, the other thing, and, and Chris alluded to that, is, is you're gonna have a, a more comfortable and a healthier house. You know, the, the, the fumes, and the particulate matter from carbon-based energy in your boiler does not make for a healthy house. So things like heat pumps, um, as Chris said, not only is it more comfortable, it's cleaner. Uh, we, had a, we had a public hearing on Tuesday, a 13-hour public hearing that Chris and I um, led. And, and one of the people testified, said she converted her home to a heat pump. She lives in upstate New York. They had a week of temperatures where it was minus 14 and they were they were comfortable in every zone in their house. So this is this is a better solution. As we know, carbon based um, solutions, when carbon is burned, it's it's highly inefficient. Um, air source heat pumps and ground source heat pumps are much more efficient than carbon based. So, yes, we have. We have not just climate goals, we now have a climate policy. The, the, the Climate Action Council passed the scoping plan. It's now the policy of New York State. We're in the process of negotiating a lot of exciting things around climate in the budget, um, but it starts with all of us. And, and we're here to help you, uh, if you are interested now to convert your home, to make it more comfortable, healthy, and to save energy. The other thing is a lot of our current energy comes from fossil fuel plants in environmental justice communities. As Chris mentioned, we can't leave anybody behind and, and we need to close those plants in the near future because of the health impacts, because of the soot, because of the asthma, because of the carcinogens. So it's, it's a justice issue, it's an environmental issue, and it's an economic issue for all of you. 
So I'm thrilled to be here with Sustainable Westchester. I also want to thank all of their um, partners who are on tonight to inform you, to guide you, to assist you. Um, this is really an exciting forum. Uh, I want to thank my partner, Chris Burdick, again. I want to thank Sustainable Westchester and all of you for being here. Thanks so much. Thank you. Wow, what a great introduction. Awesome, awesome stuff. So let us get right into it. We're going to be talking about comfort, health, and savings for your home. And again, a big thank you to Assemblyman Chris Burdick and State Senator Pete Harcum for joining us tonight. So a little bit about Sustainable Westchester is that we are a nonprofit consortium of Westchester governments, and it's our goal to enable sustainability programming to help ensure a better future for our communities. We're a municipal membership organization. Um, 44 out of the 45 municipalities in Westchester are our members, and that also includes Westchester County itself. We've got programming for residents, businesses, and nonprofits. Our largest program is Westchester Power. We have 150,000 customers in Westchester County participating in our green energy program. And this is really important for the conversation around heat pumps, because if you are using green electricity at your home and moving to an air source or ground source heat pump, you've got electrified green energy and you can consider yourself fossil fuel free in your heating and cooling. So we'll get into the other details of the other programs, but we are here to help if you have questions about community solar, we've got a commercial clean heating and cooling program, information about recycling, electric landscaping equipment, you name it, we can help. So please reach out for information about any of the other programs that you see here. I know that there's people on the call that live outside of Westchester County, and you may be wondering, well, can I get assistance on this too? And the answer is yes. Um, NYSERDA has established the regional clean energy hubs, which are going to be a one-stop shop to connect New York State residents to clean energy resources. And in our area of the Mid-Hudson region, that's these seven counties you can see on the map, um, the, the Mid-Hudson region is going to be led by Cornell Cooperative Extension of Dutchess County. So Sustainable Westchester can help people in Westchester County, and some of the energy advisors from the other counties are even going to be on the call tonight. Sean and Amanda will be in the breakout rooms. You can meet them there if you're looking to connect with Putnam or Sullivan. But either way, we've got the Mid-Hudson Energy Choices website. Lauren is going to put that in the chat. Maybe it's there already. If you need to reach out for assistance in any of the other counties, feel free to use that link in the chat. And what are the services we can provide through the Regional Clean Energy Hub? Well, we're a team of trusted, knowledgeable, and community-based organizations. Whoops. And um, we'll be here to talk about clean energy, energy efficiency, workforce development, education, health, and housing to help individuals and small businesses with making informed energy decisions. And now let's just take a look before we get into the uh, big presentation, the reason that we're targeting our home. So I think a lot of people feel this in their pocketbooks already at a large expense is coming from their energy bills at home. And we see that reflected across the source of carbon emissions in New York State as well. If you look at the pie chart of where the emissions are coming from in our state, the largest majority is from our building. So when, we thinking, when we're thinking about buttoning up our homes and our businesses, to make them more resilient, to make them more energy efficient, or also helping the state to reach its carbon reduction goals. And these are the four technologies that we'll be doing that through. Perhaps you need to take a look at insulating your drafty house. Maybe you have a heating system that's aging and you're thinking, how can I move to a new, a new heat pump, be it air source or ground source? Or maybe you're thinking about replacing your hot water heater and you want to upgrade to a heat pump hot water heater. The good news is we're gonna hear from the contractors tonight and also Rewiring America and Con Ed to talk about the benefits of these four technologies. While you'll be hearing from three of the Sustainable Westchester partner contractors tonight, we do have a list of 14 recommended installer partners and we recommend you check it out. You can give them a call. They'll do it, a site visit or a home energy assessment to get you on the pathway to making your home more energy efficient. And after you have that home energy assessment and you get a price quote from the contractors, 
you may be looking for additional help. And certainly we can help through the Regional Clean Energy Hub, but there's also some energy coach services available. So for folks in New York State, they can access the clean energy coaches of Tom Conrad and Samara in from the New York New Yorkers for Clean Power, that's available here. And for folks in Westchester County through Bedford 2030, we have the services of Robert Fishman. And um, that information I think is going in the chat. So wanting to let you know that as you embark upon your clean energy journey, there certainly is assistance from those that want to help. And I think a lot of people are here tonight to hear about rebates and incentives associated with the Inflation Reduction Act. And for that, we're going to hear from Joel Rosenberg. So Joel, if you want to unmute. Yep, I'm unmuted. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for your interest. Thanks for inviting me and to Westchester for doing uh, great work on trying to make this energy transition happen. Um, so I want to talk to you about what the IRA means for Westchester, the Inflation Reduction Act. And so next slide, please. Um, so as you may have already realized, the idea behind electrifying everything is that if we, you know, we've spent a lot of time talking about renewable electricity from solar and wind, um, and we were sort of working pretty well on converting our cars to EVs. But if we convert all the other stuff to run on renewables, then we won't burn fossil fuels anymore and we will essentially decarbonize. And so that is our current path to solving climate change. Okay, next slide. And uh, thanks to Congress, the Inflation Reduction Act has now has the opportunity to jumpstart this whole electrification movement with a bunch of cash. Uh, next slide. And so I'm gonna present some stuff here tonight the tax credits that I'm going to talk about are already available, but other programs are still rolling out. And even the tax credits, they're still coming out with guidance. So it's a bit of a caveat that the things I'm saying are the best of our knowledge at the moment, and it will keep developing over the coming year. Okay, next slide. So a couple of, uh, the, I believe the slides are going to be shared afterwards, and maybe the chat, I'm not sure if we could put the links in, but a couple of free things from Rewiring America that you might want to check out. First is our IRA savings calculator. So if you go there and enter in a little bit of personal information, uh, it will give you a list of the rebates and tax credits that you might be eligible for. And then next slide. And just to quickly give an overview, if you make up to 80% of your area median income, so where you live, if you're 80% of the middle amount that people make, then you're eligible for up to 100% discounts on certain appliances. And if you make up to 150% of that area median income, you can be eligible for up to 50% of the cost of these upgrades. And for everybody else, this is available now. There are these 30% tax credits um, that you can apply to the stuff that you buy up to certain limits, which I'll talk about in a second. Okay, next slide. Or we also wrote this guide, the Go Electric Guide to the IRA, that tries to help you map out uh, where your savings might come from. So next slide. Um, in, towards the back of this guide, there's a chart that has uh, each of the things that you might be eligible for uh, broken up. And on the left, the, the, the guide itself sort of goes through a bunch of case studies to help you see how you might take advantage over the coming years of the different uh, rebates and tax credits that are available. And you can use this, you can print it out and make a plan for yourself of when you might want to replace certain items. Uh, that's, that's on that left side highlighted in red. And then next slide. And then finally, there's this guide we have called Electrify Everything in Your Home. So it's great that Westchester has energy coaches and it's great that they are um, doing everything they can to provide you with everything you need. This guide is meant to give you more details about what the things that you might want to upgrade are and questions you might ask your contractor. It gets a little deeper into the weeds. Okay, next slide. And then towards the front of that book is a do now page and each chapter itself has its own do now. And the idea there is like, here's a thing that you can do today to start preparing for each of these appliances that you might want to upgrade over the next 10 years. So that's just something to check out and get going on. And then, yep, next slide's good. So even the next slide's okay. So the, the mapping between that Go Electric guide where you can do your planning and the Electrify Everything guide on the left is that the list in, the, in your plan kind of maps to the chapters in the book. So it's like the first few things are around buying renewable energy, which, you know, community solar or um, switching your, your utility plan uh, and how to, you know, upgrading your electrical service and then upgrading all your machines, including your car, and maybe getting solar and batteries. The idea is you can 
plot it out, plot, use these two guides together to try and make a plan, learn what you have to do, figure out what's in your house and just be ready to take full advantage. And that's something also that the energy coaches can help support you on. Okay, next slide. Finally, there's a, we have a bunch of fact sheets that might be useful. They go into the, the, that area median income program. Uh, which is the efficiency, the uh, sorry, the electrification rebates. It goes into the tax credits, and then there's also a fact sheet for contractors. Okay, next slide, please. So here is a partial overview of the Inflation Reduction Act. Okay, next slide. Um, there, the first two in this list, the electrification rebates and the energy efficiency rebates, those are the things that are income qualified. And so, next slide. The rules for these. Uh, those two, those two programs are being rolled out by the state energy offices around the country. The DOE and the IRS are currently writing the guidelines, um, so, so in the Treasury. So by the end of this year, those rules should be out, and you can start taking advantage of it if you qualify. For everybody else, these the other three on that list, which I'm going to talk about, it's okay. If you go back one. I'm going back. Sorry. Going the wrong time. way. I know. Google slides <laughs> sometimes. There we go. So uh, the electrification and efficiency tax credits, that's for things like heat pumps, heat pump water heaters, weatherization, and, and panel upgrades. And uh, you can get up to 30% off of those things with a limit of $2,000 on the heat pumps and heat pump water heaters, and up to uh, $1,200 on the other things. Uh, why don't you just go to the next slide? I think I have individual slides for these. Yeah. So here's, here's that, that first one on the list, the, the energy efficiency tax credit. And it's available through 2032. It's up to 30% of the cost of a heat pump or a heat pump water heater. It's capped at $2,000 for those two items. And for the other things, your electrical panel, your insulation, upgrading doors and windows, it's capped at 1,200 bucks. So in a given year, if you upgrade a heat pump and then you do some electrical work, you can claim up to $3,200. And then the next year it resets. And so you can do your heat pump water heater and maybe some doors and windows. And then the following year it resets and so on. And so that's just something that's available now. And there's this uh, FAQ from the IRS. Again, you can click on that from the slides if, if you wanna get in a little more into the weeds. Um, it is non-refundable, which means that's sort of tax legalese for if you don't owe enough taxes to, to claim the full credit, you can only deduct your taxes down to zero. They're not gonna send you a check back for anything you go over. So unfortunately, it is still geared towards people who owe a lot of taxes, which means they make a lot of money. But if you plan ahead, you can plan to fully capture it in years that you owe enough tax. Okay, next slide, please. So that's for like heat pumps and stuff. Then there's this uh, residential clean energy credit. This is for um, geothermal heat pumps, as well as solar panels and battery storage. And this is 30% without an income limit, uh, sorry, without income qualifications and without a um, a maximum. So like if you spend 30 grand on solar panels and a battery, you can take 30% of that off of your taxes. Um, and it is also non-refundable, but you can carry it forward from year to year. And then there's a little asterisk at the bottom. I know that there is community solar in uh, Westchester. So if you own the, uh, the panels, if you own your share of the community solar, you are eligible to deduct that. But if you're a community solar developer, you're also eligible to take that credit and you can pass that savings along to, along to your subscribers. Okay, next slide, please. I know this is a lot. It's, I'm just trying to give an overview here. Uh, the last thing here is the, uh, the EV tax credits. So there's a $7,500 tax credit for new EVs. Uh, currently it's a tax credit, but as of next year, it will become a discount that you can essentially transfer to the dealer and they'll be able to give you that money back as a discount on your car. There's also a $4,000 tax credit for used EVs if you buy it at a dealer. Um, so there are other requirements around, there are some income requirements here, um, but they're pretty high. There are some weight requirements, uh, some capacity, battery capacity requirements. And then there is a requirement that, this, that the uh, car be partially manufactured here in America. And you can check out the IRS has a website both for the new vehicle and for the used vehicle um, credits. So that's something to check out. And they are retroactive to last year, uh, I believe, to the date of, that it was passed in August. So that's something also to check out. Talk to your tax lawyer. And then the last thing I want to talk about here is for commercial development. It doesn't apply to everybody, but um, there's 179D, 
which I believe is an already existing law that's just been extended. And it basically lets you reduce your energy use and claim credit on how much you reduce it. And then next slide. For new construction, if you are able to meet a couple of standards, uh, you can get up to $2,500 or $5,000 for uh, single family and multifamily new homes. So this is a credit that goes to developers. And one of the great things is uh, the low income housing tax credit, which is given for developers of low income housing, the uh, the 179D efficiency credit can be stacked directly on top of that. So if you're building low income housing, great. If you're building energy efficient low housing income, even better. And you can claim all of that deduction um, on that development. So I raced through a ton of stuff. If you have questions, please feel free to email me, joel at rewiringamerica.org. Download the stuff, use your energy coaches, make the upgrades, decarbonize the planet. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joel. That was so interesting. And I, I myself use the Rewiring America resources all the time. The calculator on the website and the different guides you pointed out today are really useful. So for everybody on the call, we're gonna be sending that out as well after the meeting. So thanks, Joel. So we're gonna keep moving on. I know it's a lot of info at once, but we're getting through it. So next up, we're gonna hear from Dan Krupa from Con Edison. Yep. Thanks everyone for, for making it out tonight. And uh, thanks Lauren Sustainable Westchester for giving us an opportunity to talk. Um, my name is Dan Krupa. I work at Con Edison in our energy efficiency and demand management um, team, uh, specifically on our strategic engagement team. Um, I've been focusing on clean heat uh, since you know the launch of the program in 2020. So um, we're on our third year of the program and excited to, to give you some updates here. We can go to the next slide. So yeah, just a couple things uh, here, just what we want to talk about, just the status of the program, sort of where we're at with the relaunch. Um, we'll do a quick overview on sort of the incentives that are available and then some upcoming engagement. We only have a few minutes to talk today. Uh, I could talk for, for hours on this program. Um, so if there are any other questions that are any items that you're interested in that don't get talked about today, uh, my email will be at the end of this presentation. So feel free to reach out. So. Um, happy to announce that the clean heat program for Con Edison is open. Um, for folks that weren't aware, we did have to pause the program in May of last year due to an over, um, you know, over anticipated demand for the program. So there, there's a real high, um, you know, volume of these in, uh, heat pumps that are getting installed and customers are really excited about that. So I uh, appreciate, you know, all of those who have participated this far and, you know, encourage folks to, to, you know, keep installing these systems. Um, so we are relaunched on this program. We relaunched on the 17th of January. So we're about a month in, um, for the relaunch, we will only be offering incentives to those installs that have happened after that relaunch date. Um, so during the pause, if there were any installs, they will not be eligible for incentives. However, anything that has been installed post the relaunch date will be eligible. Um, with sort of the relaunch, um, we're, we're kind of working under a, a budgetary constraint um, of $10 million across all sectors. So we really had to sort of transform this program from its initial offerings um, to something that's a bit more sustainable to manage to that budget. And then for more information, there's a link provided that has all of sort of documentation about not only the Con Edison sort of offerings, um, but for the rest of state for anyone who may be working or have you know, relatives or folks in other um, non Con Edison electric territories who may be interested in, in getting these heat pumps installed. Um, next slide, please. So I wanted to just discuss sort of what incentives are available under this relaunch structure. So what I'm showing here is just the incentives that are available for our residential sector, which I think is most applicable to the folks on this call. And when I say residential, what I'm really talking about are buildings with one to four dwelling units. So you can think of your single family home or sort of a building that has no more than four dwelling units. Anything that is five and beyond will go through our multifamily program. Um, we also have a small, medium and business uh, program as well as a large commercial and industrial program. If you want more information for those, again, the resources link on the last slide will help you out and feel free to reach out to me and I can get you, uh, you know, the information you're looking for. But for today, sort of like looking at the residential sector, um, we're really trying to shift the mentality for these heat, heat pumps to really focus on the heating aspect of this. 
we really want to reduce the use for fossil fuel heating equipment and really encourage those um, heat pumps to sort of uh, take on all most, if not all, of the heating load of the building. Um, so we're having offerings to get an air source heat pump installed with decommissioning of your old existing fossil fuel heating equipment at a rate of $8,000 per home or per dwelling unit. Um, however, if you are in a two to four um, unit building, we'll give you $3,000 per unit. So if there's a four unit kind of building and you're trying to get heat pumps installed in all of those units, you can get up to $12,000. Um, we also have a offering for air source heat pumps with integrated controls. So if you want to, you know, keep your old backup sort of fossil system, if you're uncomfortable with removing it or decommissioning it, uh, we still will give you incentives to get heat pumps installed. However, that integrated control will really sort of operationalize that heat pump as the primary system and then only use the backup as needed. Um, and that'll be a smaller rate. Um, because we do want to encourage the decommissioning of these of these old systems um, at 2,500 and 1,000 um, appropriately here. Um, additionally, for ground source installs, we're giving a flat rate of $20,000 per building. And again, sort of the, the requirement of decommissioning um, your, your existing fossil systems. Um, uh, Dan, quick question from the chat, actually, uh, mm -hmm. if we before you move on, uh, do these also apply to attached townhouse condominiums? Yeah, so if you are in a, uh, you know, if you're electrifying your entire home, um, so you'll get that $8,000 rate. Um, if it is, uh, so that's why it's kind of like interesting here. So if we're kind of breaking it out as a two to four, um, however, if you have a two unit home and you're electrifying the entire home, you can see that as 6,000, but we'll give you the greater of that, you know, the 8,000 to 6,000, just because you're doing the entire, um, the entire home. Hopefully that answers the question. If you need more details, feel free to reach out. Um, and I'll just note here that the air source incentives will only be existing to existing buildings, um, not for new construction. And all of these incentives will be capped at 50% of the total project costs as well. So just something to consider. Um, two other things that aren't on the slide that I just want to quickly note is that we, will, we do have an offering for heat pump water heaters at $1,000 per tank. That is still going through sort of our, you know, installation kind of uh, qualified installation or installer list. Um, however, we will be introducing an offering for big box retailers. Um, so at the point of sale, you would get an instant discount of that $1,000, um, which we'll be, we'll be rolling out in the next couple of months. Um, additionally, we also have not associated with clean heat, but Con Edison also has rebates for home weatherization um, at $1,000 to weatherize your home. And if you already have a heat pump system that covers your full um, load, we'll give you an additional $1,000 on top of that to weatherize your home. Um, and that offering will expire at the end of March. Um, so if you already have a heat pump system and you are considering uh, weatherizing your home with insulation, uh, you will be, um, there will be an option to get an extra $1,000 um, from Con Edison to do so. Um, next slide, just quickly, last thing I think we have here is that um, we are hosting monthly webinars um, throughout 2023. Um, on the right hand side here, you can see the list of upcoming scheduled webinars. The next will be on March 15th. Um, we'll be doing these on a monthly basis for the foreseeable future. Um, we'll have much more, you know, uh, conversations about sort of the nuances of the program can answer any questions and really hear feedback from both customers and contractors on their experiences. So highly encourage everyone to attend. Um, if you want those invites, um, feel free to reach out um, and I can get you connected with those. Um, my email is here on this list and also uh, my colleague Toby Hyde. Um, either of us will be happy to answer any of your questions that you have. Um, so that's all I had for today. Uh, you know, just a quick uh, update on where we're at. Uh, but like I said, any other questions, um, I'm, I'm available. So happy to, to re you know, reach out if you have any questions. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. And can you just say one more time how people would access these rebates in the first place? Yep. So uh, we have a find a contractor tool, you know, available that you can find participating contractors in the program. 
And when the participating contractor comes out and installs your heat pump, um, the, you will get the rebate as an instant uh, discount on the invoice um, from the contractor. And then we give the rebate to the contractor. So it'll be automatically deducted from your invoice um, on the contractor's end. And you'll see it as a line item. It'll say Con Edison rebate. Um, but the actual flow of that incentive dollars will go to the contractor um, themselves. Okay. Great. And all the contractors on the Sustainable Westchester list are, are also partners with Con Ed and can help you claim these rebates. So thanks, Dan. That was really helpful. Now we're going to move into talking about doing home energy efficiency, insulation, weatherization, whatever you want to call it. Lexi from Healthy Home is here to tell you all about it. Thanks so much, Laura, and I appreciate the introduction. And thank you to everyone that's on the call. Assemblyman Chris Burdick and Pete Harco, we appreciate you taking the time and everyone from Rewiring America. It's, a, it's something that we've been using as a contractor to help customers figure out all the options available. Um, and again, Dan, you taking the time to go through the clean heat program is super helpful and he did it very efficiently. Um, I have heard people talk about it for hours, so bravo to you on that. Um, and of course, thank you to all the other contractors on the webinar to kind of review what we're doing. So my name is Lexi. I'm with Healthy Home Energy and Consulting. Essentially what we're doing here is our goal is to help people get their homes ready for heat pumps and ready for geothermal systems. So we wanna help people reduce their overall heating and cooling load. So this does have an instant impact in terms of people's energy use. So we wanna reduce your overall energy use first. So then HVAC contractors can come in and properly size your system. So um, essentially I have this first slide is a good example of what a lot of people might see around their homes. They might see in their basements, this big area where they feel a draft coming in, or they may notice gaps in their ductwork or dirty insulation in their attics. And they kind of want to go, what do I do with this? What does this mean? And we kind of want to make sure that you take a kind of house as a system approach. So make sure you're looking at everything in your home, how everything interacts with other things, and then kind of take action from there. Next slide. Um, so basically, we kind of take that whole home approach. You want to find out where your home currently is at, where you're home might be inefficient in terms of insulation or air leakage, find out what you need, um, what you can do to the home to make it more energy efficient um, by keeping the conditioned air where you want it to keep it, and then take educated action from there. A lot of people might really be driving toward electrification. You just want to make sure that your home is in a state for, the, for those efficient appliances to run as efficiently as they're expected to. Um, next slide. So I'm going to kind of review a good process is to kind of first get a home energy audit, get a baseline of where your home is at, um, review the solutions with your contractor, figure out what's going on in the home, what do you need, and what are your options. Um, this can be a lot of information. We kind of want to avoid analysis or paralysis of analysis, where there's so many things to do that you don't know where to go next. Kind of help you prioritize what you need to do, and then maybe possibly reduce your load first. Things like air sealing, doing insulation, considering your indoor air quality. Last thing you wanna do is insulate and air your house and all of a sudden you notice you're coughing a little more. So keeping all those things in mind. And then also you might not be ready for a heat pump system now um, as rewiring America reference. There's a lot of things that are happening over the course of the year. So keeping this in mind as you're making your plans for your home, um, maybe getting your house to a better place where you have a smaller heating and cooling load so you can have put in smaller equipment after you've made some improvements to the overall energy use of the home. And then the last step of course is possibly electrifying the house, installing a heat pump system, whether it be air source or ground source, moving over your water heating, all those different sorts of things. Next slide. Um, so I'm gonna kind of review what the healthy home process is. So just to be clear, there are definitely, as Lauren put up on the other slide, there's numerous other contractors who do also perform audits. I'm gonna kind of review what our company does as part of our process. Our initial appointment is about two to three hours. And in that, we're really doing that baseline testing of the home. We're gonna do things like a blower door, which is that top left image where we're gonna actually measure the amount of air leakage that's happening in the home. You might notice you have drafty windows or drafty doors. We really wanna measure the overall air leakage of the home. So we do that. That that number also directly impacts like the sizing of your heating and cooling system. So we really wanna get a good understanding of where you are there. We also do combustion safety and efficiency testing to make sure your current combustion appliances are running safely and efficiently. We do a thorough interior and exterior evaluation of your home. 
infrared scanning to really see, or you might be insula missing insulation and maybe walls or ceilings, like that bottom right-hand corner kind of shows that the rest of the ceiling was pretty well insulated, but they missed a bay. Um, and also the bottom left-hand picture notes, there's, we can kind of really feel where those drafts are coming in from. So we do that. We do indoor air quality sampling, because um, a lot of our measures do involve reducing the amount of air that leakage that's happening in the home, which can impact your indoor air quality. So we always want to get a good understanding of where you are at that. After all that, we do come back to our office and create an energy model. So we put in your current energy usage along with all that information we gather at your first um, appointment. And then we return to your home within five to seven business days with a hard copy of your custom, C-U-S-T-O-M, my apologies, my typo, solution, including your infrared scans to kind of review what you could do to make the home more comfortable and energy efficient. Um, at the bottom there, you will note that our evaluation process is not free. So I do want to be transparent about that. New York State does have a free energy audit program that pays contractors $150. Um, our evaluation is just a lot more intensive than that. So there ends up being a copay of $350 plus tax because we credit you that information, that um, nicer to incentive upfront. Um, what I always like to make sure homeowners know is to interview your contractors. So Lauren and Sustainable Westchester have done a great job vetting contractors. I always recommend calling us up, interviewing, making sure it's clear what you're looking for, what your expectations are, and make sure you kind of align best with what you're looking to actually receive from the evaluation. Um, so I always recommend interviewing your contractors. Next slide. Um, so doing all of that work and kind of making improvements to the home to over to improve your overall heating and cooling of your home, um, reduce the heating and cooling load of your home to take the next step towards electrification. Healthy Home does have an HVAC division where we do install air source heat pumps. So kind of making sure you take advantage of what works best for you, whether it be an air source heat pump, there are of course ductless and ducted options and Bell with, um, we'll review this later in the slideshow. So they'll kind of go more in depth on this but really reducing that heating and cooling load to make sure this equipment functions as efficiently as possible. Next slide. Um, so I kind of always like to cap it off with so in the left side of the images kind of really show those old radiators, old typically oil or gas fired radiators that are firing the boiler or furnace to try and stop using these sort of like older systems. You want to add some insulation to reduce the heating and cooling load to make a good situation for you know, a geothermal system or an air source heat pump system. We wanna make sure that those things function as efficiently as possible. Um, and I think the last slide is just an image of our company. Um, I will of course be in the breakout room later. So if you have any specific questions about your home specifically, don't hesitate to chat in the chat room or of course we're available on the phone. Um, there are definitely incentives available through New York State's Comfort Home Program for market rates. So there's no income caps for that program. So we are also eligible for that, as well as Dan mentioned, the Con Ed program, Con Edison Utility Territory does also have some an extra thousand dollar incentive to make your home more energy efficient and comfortable. So we can kind of review all that with you as well. But I appreciate all your time and I'll pass it off to Belle, I believe. I think. Oh, yeah, it's me for a second. Thanks, Lexi. Sorry. So it's all good. Within the New York State program, NYSERDA offers, like Lexi was saying, comfort home. There are two other programs for people that are either at 80 percent area median income or 60 percent area median income. So typically people that could fall into this category are those that are receiving an enhanced star property tax exemption and everything is still the same. You still call the contractor to have a home energy assessment. They'll walk you through different ways you can insulate and air seal your home. But the good thing is at the end of that, you would have access to a discount of 50% up to $5,000. And that's the assisted home performance with energy star program. And for anyone on the call that perhaps knows a senior or someone receiving SNAP, HEAP, or TANF assistance. This is for renters and apartment buildings or homeowners that are able to access a program called Empower. This brings $10,000 of free home energy upgrade work to someone. They um, can not only access insulation, but also low flow shower heads, new light bulbs, and really a much more comfortable way of living. So if you yourself, or if you know someone that perhaps falls into the income ranges that you could see here on the screen, please do reach out to us and we can get you enrolled in the Empower program. It's a really awesome New York State program to take advantage of. 
not much of a wait time involved at all. And um, it's, it's really worth looking into. So give us a call about that if you can. And we heard from Joel all about the federal tax credits that are available to people of all income. So that's a really good thing. Okay, so we've covered insulation and air sealing, and now we're gonna move into the space of heat pumps. And to start off, we're gonna hear from Giovanni at Bell Mechanical. Okay, Giovanni. Can you hear me okay? Yep. All right, perfect. Well, hello everyone. Um, I know we've uh, been giving you a ton of information thus far, and I'm about to give you more. <laughs> so I'll try to keep it simple. I'll try to you know keep it short. If you have any additional questions, definitely ask it once we go into our breakout rooms. Uh, but um, Lexi pretty much uh, covered the whole uh, how to close the envelope for your home. And really what we're trying to do is um, we all want a healthier and more efficient home, right? So, Bell, we've been around you know, for a long time. We've been installing uh, heat pumps for decades now, believe it or not. The air source heat pumps for over two decades, ground, uh, ground source for over two um, so although it's, 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 it's not a new technology um, to the market and us, it's, it's, it's improved quite drastically over the last few years. So what is a heat pump? Let's just dive right, you know, right into it. So just to kind of simplify it, a heat pump really uh, is uh, it's a unit that gives you both your heat and your AC. It does not use electricity to directly uh, provide you with heat. It does not use electricity to generate heat directly, all right? So what it does is it just transfer heat. That's something that's very important to kind of keep in mind. Once we all hear electrification of your heating system, you're thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna be using electricity to heat my home, right? Well, that's not the case. Uh, it's, it's just basically uh, transferring heat um, and it does it by a beautiful process that is magical. <laughs> if I go into it right now, I would probably spend a few hours uh, diving into it. So the, the two different, the two main different types of heat pumps, right? We have the air source heat pump, which is pretty much the same setup as a, uh, a, a central air conditioning system, basically. You have an outdoor unit that is connected to an indoor unit. And, and as, as you can see the illustration here, you have the outdoor unit which in, a, in, in, in an AC setup, that would be considered the, the condensing unit. Um, we're talking about heat pumps. So that is actually, that's the heat pump itself. It is connected to an indoor unit, which we call the air handler, right? And that air handler distributes the air throughout the house through the ductwork, as you can see. Uh, depending on the season, it'll give you hot air in the wintertime and cold air in, in, in the summertime. So essentially, so look at this as an air conditioning unit, right? And in, in the summertime, when you turn your AC on and you stand next to that outdoor unit, if you feel the air coming out from that unit itself, it's going to feel hot. Most people think it's because it is operating, it's working, so it's, it produces hot air. That's not the case. What it's really doing is it's taking all the hot air, hot, humid air from inside your house and dumping it outside, right? And then it's pumping cold air into the house, which feels cooler because there's no more um, hot air in the house. Essentially what it does in the winter time, there's a reverse valve. So it's gonna be doing the opposite. It's gonna be removing cold air from inside your house. So now in the winter time, if you stand next to that same unit, that air is gonna feel cold. It's not gonna feel warm anymore because it's taking the cold air from inside your house, dumping it outside and then pumping warm air into the house. Essentially, that's what it's doing. Just to simplify, really. Um, go back to, and this, so that that prior illustration is what we call a ducted system because it provides air throughout the home via ductwork. Right now, we are looking at a ductless setup. If you notice, there is no ductwork, but you see the outdoor unit at the bottom right-hand corner, and you see some copper piping going up along the wall and across uh, the beam to the indoor unit, which is considered the mini split, um, you know, it's a mini version of the air handler. And this is basically what it will be providing you with both your, your heat and your cold air. Now, one of the benefits of the ductless systems really is if you have say three bedrooms in your home and you have 
one of these units in each bedroom. You have one in the living room, one in the basement, and one in the dining room. Uh, everyone is watching a movie down in the basement. There is no need to have every single one of these units set at 75 degrees because you're down in the basement. You can have, you can control each unit individually. So if you have five of these indoor units, essentially you have uh, five, uh, five different zones, more or less, or five different thermostats, if you will. Next slide. Ducted system again. Um, air source heat pump. Okay. Is this right for my home? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Okay. So if you don't have ductwork, you know, a lot of people say to me, well, I don't have any ductwork in my house. Is this going to be a, a, an issue? Absolutely not. Uh, even, even with ground source heat pump. I mean, we've been installing geothermal systems for such a long time. We can actually install a ductless geothermal system for your home. No big deal. You know? Um, it, it, you know, if you have uh, an oil uh, heating system, a, a furnace, a gas, propane, whatever it is, and 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 you know, you want to again be not so, you know, being financially responsible, right, is very important, as well as being environmentally responsible. You know, we all want to do our part for the environment and and for the for the planet and for our children and our children's children so on and so forth, but it's also a matter of being financially responsible. And the best way to really do this is to move away from, from high oil prices, from, from you know, fossil fuel heating and going into the electrification of your heating, quite honestly. I mean, you, know, you have a conventional heating system that gives you anywhere between 80, maybe 93% efficiency to a heat pump that can give you, you know, three, four, 500% efficiency, right? Um, so what are the costs? I mean, it, it sounds expensive. <laughs> it, I mean, look, right now you have so many incentives. You know, if, if you're ever thinking about doing uh, a heat pump right now, really is the time to do it, quite honestly. I mean, you have the ground source heat pump, you have 30% tax credit. That's a federal incentive. Then you have Con Ed, as you, as you uh, uh, um, I remember uh, Dan, Dan Krupa before talking about uh, you know, for a ground source, you can uh, qualify for up to $20,000 uh, rebate. For an air source heat pump, you can qualify for up to $8,000. Uh, there is also a $5,000 New York State credit that that applies to, to the uh, geothermal system. I mean, the list goes on and on, right? So if you're really thinking about doing it right now, is the time to do it. Um, uh, uh, an air source heat pump, you know, you have a one-on-one -on -one system you know, one outdoor unit to one indoor unit, depending on capacity and efficiency, it can, you know, it can start at, you know, $4,500, $5,000 to, you know, say $7,000 for a one-to-one -one system. Um, so, so, you know, if, if, you're, if you're thinking about doing it, the, the, the best thing to do uh, is to get your home evaluated, get an assessment. Um, you know, this is a, a, a great investment not just for today, but for your future, again, being financially and environmentally responsible um, and to make an educated decision. You, you need the right information, really. So right now, it's giving you the Reader's Digest version of everything, you know, throwing a lot of information at you, uh, but just give us a call and we'll try to help you out as much as we can. Next slide. Heat pump hot water heaters. Uh, this is great too. So essentially, it's a, it's a, it's a hot a water heater. It's just a regular tank with a little bit more technology attached to it. And then you have an actual heat pump, right? That's the same thing that you would have on the outdoor uh, of your house or in the ground for your home, but it's geothermal. So it's really using the ambient air around the tank to heat the water. I mean, this, this thing is extremely, extremely efficient. So as it is absorbing the hot air from the location where we install it, the hot humid air to heat the water, right? It produces, the water gets hot, that cold air has to go somewhere. So it goes into that same room. So essentially, you know, it's, it's going to become a, a dehumidification system at the same time. It's going to condition that, that space at the same time. It's going to heat your water and lower your costs. It's, it's a really neat technology. Um, and there, it was mentioned earlier as well, through Con Ed, there are incentives uh, for the heat pump hot water heater right now. Con Ed is offering a thousand dollars uh depending on the capacity 
uh, uh, required, you know, we can go to, to from a 40 gallon to an 80 gallon tank, you know, um, it can start at $3,500. And then you take thousand dollars that you get from Con Ed. So it's, it's a really, it's really neat system, great technology, very efficient, uh, and, you know, at, at a good price. Next slide. So ground source heat pump, right? Uh, just a, a, a really brief uh, overview. It's, again, it's, it's, it's the geothermal. It goes in the ground. That's why it's called ground source. It goes in the ground. We dig pretty deep into the ground, actually. Uh, you know, 150 feet, uh, a feet per ton. We can go down to 450 feet deep. So at that depth, uh, there is a constant temperature of approximately 50, somewhere between 55, 57 degrees. So when it comes to heating and cooling your home, by far, this is the most efficient and cleanest way to clean and heat your home. Okay. So just because we're short on time a little bit, Giovanni from Bell is going to have a breakout room talking about all the different types of heat pumps, geothermal, air source, heat pump, hot water heater. Um, and then we're going to hear now from our next geothermal contractor. Corey is here from Dandelion to talk about uh, geothermal heating and cooling. And then we'll all make, make out into the breakout rooms. Sounds good. Yeah, well, uh, a lot of great information. Thanks for having me. Um, thanks everybody for joining. I'll keep this really, really short and sweet. So we'll kind of burn through these slides. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, I think it's important to understand a little bit about <clears throat> who Dandelion is. So Dandelion is a spinoff from Google's parent company, Alphabet. Um, Alphabet has a think tank called the Moonshot Factory or um, uh, Google X. And the idea there was like, let's figure out ways to make the world a better place, um, save the planet, et cetera. And then the ideas get pitched to venture capital companies. And then they say, yeah, we can make a good business out of this. And so let's see what we can do. And so we took our first two and a half million dollars from Google Ventures. And, uh, and we moved to New York in 2018 to prove concept. In 2018, we installed our first uh, 37 systems uh, in that year, and it really helped us to identify that, look, ground source heat pumps can be cost effective. Ground source heat pumps um, you know, are, are also can be installed without the need for fossil fuel fired backup systems. And, uh, and so you know, we, from there, we decided to, to really grow and scale. Next, next slide, please. I found this uh, this slide recently, and, and really, it's a, it's a pretty like uh, jaw dropping uh, visual, right? Like over the last two thousand years, you can really see what the planet has done from a warming perspective, right? Like um, I think the the room of people who really just don't agree that we need to do things to to decarbonize and to save our planet is shrinking. Right, so like the the science is there. Um, this is really our why, right? This is where dandelion comes into into play, and where a lot of the folks that you've met today are doing, um, you know, really great work to make this happen. So next slide. So what we've identified is that geothermal is the most efficient and effective way to heat and cool a space. Period. There's no question across any spectrum, any uh, HVAC industry professional. Um, the problem has always been that the upfront infrastructure price really just simply outweighed any of the financial benefits you would get by installing a uh, geothermal system. And, uh, and so, you know, Dandelion really wanted to scale up and, and solve for that. Next slide, please. So when we first moved to New York, we I said we installed our first 37 systems. Um, we had a, a fully like uh, subcontracted model. And uh, and so we quickly learned that it was really hard to maintain quality assurance when everything is subcontracted. So we've really moved to um, a mostly vertically integrated business model where the majority of our employees are doing all the work from drilling and trenching to the installation of the uh, of the trenching, uh, as well as the the um, the ground source heat pumps themselves, the permitting process, monitoring and maintenance. Um, and so we're really excited to really be a full turnkey provider. Um, we have over uh, 1,200 systems installed. 
uh, across our service territory. Um, so everywhere from New York to Connecticut to Massachusetts, Long Island sprinkled in there. Um, we're really expanding pretty rapidly. We've raised $150 million in total funding, and, uh, and we're super excited about the direction the company is going in. Uh, we can go ahead and skip this slide, actually, Lauren, and this one as well. All right, so what is geothermal? You know, um, Giovanni did a good job of explaining, you know, just the, the general principle. You know, the, the earth by below around 10 feet is a constant 50 to 55 degrees. So we use that uh, that heat as a baseline to then bring that 50 to 55 degrees into the basement. The heat pump does what heat pumps do, and it allows us to really boost the temperature up to roughly 105 degrees, 108 degrees Fahrenheit. And we just simply blow air over a 105 degree coil to bring heat into the home. The idea is we wanna design a system that can support your thermostat at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. In the, uh, in the wintertime, the reverse is true. We have that same kind of reversing valve. We're pulling heat and humidity out of the house through the ductwork, and then we're bringing in um, cool air uh, by way of the ductwork as, as well. Next slide, please. All right, so we have uh, a, a number of different drill rigs. Um, we actually spent some time in Sweden over the last year and they helped us to identify uh, some, uh, some really great drilling technology improvements. We've, we've um, deployed these new rigs called the Kamakio rigs. I believe Dandelion has uh, 12 of them deployed in the field right now. Um, they're super small. They allow us to get to places we would have never been able to get to. They're about five, five and a half feet wide. Uh, and they're on track. It's a track system. So they're they're super light, um, you know, and, and they do really, really great work really, really quickly. Next slide, please. So this is a picture of a borehole. It's going to be roughly five inches in diameter. Everything is subterranean. Everything's below grade. Um, we're going to drill straight down into the earth. The, the depth will be somewhere between 150 and 450 feet deep. Uh, and then from there, we're going to, uh, it's a closed loop system. So it's a really one long continuous set of piping. The first real connection you're going to see is right up there at the top where we 90 degree over and bring it right into the house. Next slide, please. Oops. That's okay. Right here is perfect. So, um, so this is really what the punch in look uh, looks like. So this is where where we're bringing the geothermal lines from the trench, bringing them into the house, uh, and then um, and then from here we're pressurizing those lines, making sure that they're not leaking. Um, and uh, and so we we do that uh, before we bury the geothermal ground loop system. Next slide, please. We will bring your home back to rough grade. This is probably the worst part of the geothermal process. It is a mess. Uh, it makes a, it makes a pretty big mess, but we'll bring everything back to flat rough grade for you to put some seed and topsoil down when we're done. And as you can see, there's no wellheads or anything sticking up out of the ground. As a matter of fact, there's no mechanical equipment in the ground at all. Um, it's it's really just that inert material, the the what they call HDPE, high density polyethylene. It's a utility grade plastic. Uh, and it's and it's a legacy system that's going to last, you know, 75 to 100 plus years in the ground. Next slide. Um, so what does it look like on the inside? Um, you can see for folks who have ductwork that originates in a basement or like a furnace that originates in a basement. Um, on the left hand side, we've got a packaged unit. This one um, packaged uh, cabinet uh, houses the well pump, the compressor, the air handler. Uh, really everything you need for heating and cooling. There's no need for any outdoor com condenser whatsoever. And then for homes that have air handlers up in an attic, um, we really have, uh, we have a system that's called a split unit. Effectively, it's where we have the compressor portion in the basement, and then we run a refrigerant line set up to the air handler up in the attic. Next slide, please. A um, lot of really great incentives. Uh, Con Edison, as we've learned, has a $20,000 incentive um, for just a flat per project. Um, there's a lot of other utilities around the area, though. Central Hudson, NYSEG, National Grid. Um, it's all on a per ton basis. So, um, you know, roughly you're going to see about $12,000 for a system in Central Hudson, $9,000 for a single system in uh, NYSEG and National Grid. Um, there's a 30% federal tax credit, the New York state income tax credit, which is really new to, um, 
you know, to New York uh, as of this last year is a is you is typically going to be about a total of five thousand dollars. So, um, so that's super exciting. I think for the most part, uh, it's going to cost roughly for a single system twenty five hundred to three thousand square foot home. Uh, you're probably looking at somewhere around twenty four to twenty five thousand dollars to put in a system. Um, we do have a pay as you go model, which is great. We can get that monthly payment down to under two hundred dollars a month. And for a lot of our customers who have oil and propane, propane as their uh, fuel source, um, we're able to uh, finance that uh, project where the monthly payment for the financing plus the operating cost to run the system is usually less than what the homeowner is paying in fuel, oil, or propane. So we can really make that payback period um, right away. Uh, so um, super exciting technology. Uh, we are offering a discount uh, for attendees of this webinar. So we'll offer you a $500 um, discount when you, uh, if and when you call the, the company um, to, to set up a consultation, just use Corey Feb 23 and, uh, and that'll be earmarked for a $500 discount. But I'm happy to, to answer any additional questions in the breakout rooms. Okay, great. Thanks, Corey. Uh, okay, so just a few quick things I wanted to mention about geothermal for people on the call. If you do live in Westchester, you can make use of the Westchester Geopossibilities tool. This is a really awesome website. You type in your website, um, you type in your address to the website, and it will tell you if your house is a good candidate or not for geothermal, and it also will give you some estimated savings, and the price prediction that it generates does not include rebates from the utility or rebates from federal tax credit. So whatever you see in the calculator for geopossibilities, you can know that you probably get even more savings than what's listed there. Um, and also I have a lot of resources on the Sustainable Westchester website. So if you're wondering what other people have done in their homes, what savings percentages they've reached by doing home energy efficiency projects, you can scan the QR code here on the screen right now. It'll take you to our case studies and video profile homeowner success stories. So definitely take a look at that. Um, this particular case study features Padma, who I think is hosting an event at the library right now where they are zooming in to this presentation. So if you enjoyed the presentation today, we've got more events coming up. There's a repair cafe happening in Pound Ridge. There'll be a similar presentation as to what we did tonight at the library in Mount Pleasant. And also Bedford 2030 has the power of trees. This is a big conference coming up on March 25th at Fox Lane High School. And the last thing I'll leave you all before we break out into the rooms is with one easy actionable item. You know, when we're talking about doing construction in your own home, it's not like you can turn around and do it tomorrow. It's a big commitment and it can be a process. So if you're wanting to take action on sustainability right now, we recommend people in Con Ed territory use our program called Grid Rewards. This is a demand response program that can help you get paid for your energy savings. This is a really amazing tool because as you participate in reducing your energy, you're also helping to lower carbon emissions and directly reducing emissions in environmental justice communities. So if you're not signed up for Grid Rewards yet, this demand response program um, has a, is available for all times, but it's really great if you sign up before the end of April. So let's get started on the breakout rooms. We have about 20 minutes to do that. I'm gonna open the rooms right now. If you are able to, you can hop into any room you like. And if you don't have the feature um, that you see here on the slide about breakout rooms, this is what it looks like on a computer. This is what it looks like on a tablet. If you don't see that feature, just unmute yourself and, and tell us which room you wanna to go to or put in the chat which room you'd like to go to. So we've got five spaces tonight. We've got our geothermal breakout room, home energy efficiency and insulation, air source heat pumps and heat pump hot water heaters with Bell. And I'll be talking about grid rewards as well. 